Politico reports Kamala Harris is hiring yet another chief speechwriter, her third since taking office. This reported hire comes after 16 staffers have left the vice president's team in the past 21 months. And as word salads like these have become all too common for Biden's second in command. Watch. When you see our kids, and I truly believe that they are our children, they are the children of our country, of our communities, I, I mean, our future is really bright if we, if we prioritize them and therefore prioritize the climate crisis and the need to address it. So we invested an additional $12 billion into community banks because we know community banks are in the community. You need to get to go and need to be able to get where you need to go. The significance of the passage of time, right? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time, and there is such great significance to the past. Oh, Brian, uh, somehow I don't think hiring another speechwriter yeah. will help her, because I'm pretty sure you got to get to go where you got to go where you got to go where you got to go. Where you got to go. <laughs> was probably not in the speech. This that is, was probably her ad living. This is like me going out in the golf course, you know, and just shanking them all over the place. And give me a new caddy. Give me a new caddy. <laughs> totally. My caddy's the problem. Totally. It's the clubs that are the problem. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you could fix this with a new speechwriter. She doesn't know what she's about. Mm -mm. You know, it's, it's always sort of what's convenient. Where's mm -hmm. the wind blowing? If you don't know what you're about, you can't give a great speech, and you end up in these situations where you just say nothing at all or these word salads. In either case, you're not a compelling leader for people. No, you're not. Hitting the nail on the head, not only does she not know what she stands for, but she's not a good leader, so she can't even articulate concepts we can get behind as voters. There's just a dearth everywhere in every column, Harris. So I see it a little bit different. By the way, and I'm just going to take a stab at his name, Dave, Dave Cavell, I think is how you pronounce his last name. Um, he actually used to be the speechwriter for the climate czar yeah. or envoy, mm -hmm. John Kerry. That's right and formerly was a speechwriter and, and helped out in the latter stages of the Obama administration. So if she's trying to find her voice on climate, this might be the guy. But I do think she knows who she is. Mm. She just can't sell it. She goes to south of the border, because she hasn't actually, as, president, as vice president, hasn't been to the border. She goes down to the Northern Triangle countries and she says, do not come. And then the White House makes her clean that up. But that might actually be who she is. I mean, she, she might be the person who would tell people, do not come because we can't handle it, because we don't have a wall, because her state has a wall, California. I mean, she may actually be exactly who she's showing us to be, and maybe America's deciding that that's not who they want. She didn't get one delegate when she ran for president. And maybe she's deciding that on Biden's behalf, she can't sell it because he doesn't want her to say what she thinks. And Kaylee, part of the reports to Harris's point are that as she has had a decades long career in government, part of the reason she has such high turnover, turnover is because the staff doesn't believe that she believes in anything. They see hmm. that she goes where the wind blows and whatever will maybe curry favor with voters is what all of a sudden she gets behind, whether it be marijuana legislation pro or con or hmm. reparations or whatever. Whatever it is, it seems to change by the day, and her staffers know that. In addition, they've talked about um, reports of an aggressive leadership style uh -huh. or, or, or lack thereof, um, a chaos, yes. one that pits each other against each other, and that may be why she has lost an average of almost one mm. staff member per month. It's extraordinary. Nothing like this happened in Vice President Pence's office because people like their boss. Mm -hmm. Imagine <laughs> taking a job where you know you're doomed to failure. It's like taking a job on the Charlie Chris campaign on the battlefield of love, as he calls it, <laughs> knowing that DeSantis is about to trounce you probably by double digits. Um, there's not a worse job in the White House than Kamala speechwriter, mm -hmm. maybe being the person who has to wake Joe Biden up constantly and make sure he's with it before he does his like two speeches a week. Um, but you make a really good point. It might be the office environment. Politico interviewed 20 22 former or current staffers. That's a lot of people who said that they felt it was an abusive yeah. environment, likely because of the chief of staff, they said. Uh, and they said it's not a healthy environment. People often feel mistreated. It's not a place where people feel supported, but a place where people are made to feel like bleep. Mm -hmm. And they said it all starts at the top. And the irony, Katrina, is that, number one, 
I don't know what the chief speechwriter uh, would be able to cite after working for her because clearly she just ad libs and babbles. So it's not like we're really going to get to know what that speechwriter has. I guess we have to rely on his experience as Kerry's speechwriter and with the Obama administration. But it also shows and <laughs> illustrates to me, given his prior positions, it's just a recycling. Right? Mm -hmm. It's that yeah. small little tiny democratic machine right. of everyone patting themselves on the back and passing each other around the same 25 people that work for the same administrations over and over again. Is it because they can't recruit new fresh blood? Is it because no one wants to sign on to Kamala Harris because no one believes in her and sees she's an absolute absence of a leader? Well, I think a few things. I think the fact that she has this turnover is very indicative of the type of person that she is. But as, a, as a, an American, what I want in a leader is someone that stands in their truth. I don't have to agree with you. But I want you to stand in your truth. I want you to have the guts to speak it so that I can believe in you, which is why I love DeSantis, right? Because he's a former Navy SEAL. He just, mm -hmm. it is what it is. And I love that. I feel confident in that. I don't feel confident in her. Oh, it makes me wonder, who does she listen to? No like one. if she's ever going to be a, she certainly doesn't listen to the people well, around her, even well, when they have her best interest Well, now it's John Kerry's yeah. speechwriter. Oh, that's okay. who she's listening to. So she's going to be on private planes a lot. Funny, that'll right. work. There we go. Well, let them that's just circle roll. down the drain. <laughs> hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.